Road here. It is uh, April 20th, going to the 21st, uh, 2020. And um, I'm going to come at you with a video here real quick. Okay, guys, we had a geomagnetic storm, okay? Brought auroras all the way down into Montana. And this is spaceweather.com. Go over and check them out, guys. Um, but check this out. It's a G-Level 1 storm. It took forecasters by surprise. It's kind of funny, isn't it? And what caused it? A CME. So, if it took... We got hit by a CME that surprised them. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, you put that together in one sentence, it kind of makes you wonder, right? Well, the CME that just hit us is one of those ones that popped off the sun at the same time that Scott seen on the, on the CME tracker. And me and Scott did that live stream on. And I did a couple other videos. And so did he, I think. And listen, we were saying from the beginning that we were going to take a glancing blow from that. So, you know, when I was watching other, other channels and stuff, and they were still calling it solar wind this morning. And earlier this afternoon. It's kind of crazy. Because it was a CME, not solar wind, that hit us. And, you know, I get criticized sometimes for reporting on small stuff. This is why I do that. That wasn't necessarily small stuff. That was something that me and Scott had never even seen. Two CMEs exactly the same time popping off of exactly the opposite side of each other on the sun. And that's one of those is what gave us the glancing blow. So take that for what it's worth. Run with that all you want. Um, but I, I just wanted to point that out guys. Um, that's why I report on even small stuff because we can learn from that. We really can. So, um, we'll move on. So this is over at the space weather prediction center at, uh, NOAA. Okay. Obviously it's showing that we're still, you know, that we had a G G one level storm. Scroll down through here again, guys, it was up there for about six hours. All right. I was showing you guys how it was ramping up, and I told you guys, you know, when it was at a four right there, that I thought it was probably, it looked like it might be getting ready to get up into storm level, and it did. And again, it stayed there for six hours, which is very consistent with a CME, especially a sideways blow, all right? Solar wind typically goes up there and stays for a little bit longer. It's not moving as fast, usually. But what I want to show you here, guys, here's the ACE data. Now, I call this stuff popcorn, right? And why do I call it popcorn? Because it, it's showing uh, variability. In other words, it's fluctuating up and down, going from small to big and big to small. Each one of these dots is the data point. All right, so it catches a reading and it plots it with a dot. So when we see it jumping around, we know that something's a little off, right? Now, I want to explain this, okay? The, over here on the ACE especially, that range that it's showing you there, will change. I've made the mistake before and didn't pay attention to that and think that something was a lot, you know, the change was really great and it really wasn't. So let me uh, explain. This is zero, basically. So from there to there is only one unit. So what we're seeing in here, even though it's jumping around, really is not that big of a deal. We're talking zero to one unit of density, right? The same distance from, you know, here to here is the same from here to here, but now we got 10 units there. And then to take it even further, from here to here goes from 10 to 100. So now in that same exact distance, we got 90 units. So when you see something jumping around up in here, and then it goes way down here, that's a huge drop, okay, or increase. So we have to pay attention to the, the, the graph numbers here on the levels on the side. If we don't, we'll make mistakes, and I've done it a bunch. Um, it's easy to, to like forget to do. But what I want to say is, as we're watching this, you see how everything kind of leveled off? And, you know, again, the KP and everything I just showed you, that graph, um, is showing the same kind of thing where it, it leveled off, right? But check this out. Right now, we're having a, a spike on all of it, especially density. Remember, from here to here is only one unit. From here to here is 100 units, okay? 
So we're seeing little data points like right here, and then it pops way up here. So that, that's a pretty good, good spike, guys, in density. So, and the temperature was reacting at the same time. All right, it's just very, very variable. So are we still having the effects of the CME? Did we have some solar wind come in behind it? Or, you know, what's going on here? Um, you know, we're not in storm level, so it's probably not that big of a deal. But, you know, and again, here's the end low model. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because it looks pretty standard from what we usually see. Um, what I will say is that I don't trust that thing. Anything past two days. Right now, we're about right here. So we can probably go out here and look at this and say, hey, yeah, that's probably going to be what happens. But what we're seeing over here will change. I promise does every time. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. But um, also, I'm going to show you this. Here's the Aurora forecast. Now, you can see how everything's kind of died off there. Um, I'm not going to run that model. You guys can do that if you want. Right here at the uh, magnometers, we had a spike right there. You guys can see that. Um, right there that could have been a cosmic ray spike it could have been a lot of different things that could have been a tool flaw could be a, a, a misreading of the tool okay um, you know it's probably not that big of a deal but it did happen it happened right at the end of that geomagnetic storm also okay and um, yeah I'm gonna poke off of that so yeah, right there. It's the same about the, if you look here, the storm levels and all that, it all moved at the same time. So that most definitely was caused by that CME. Uh, I'm going to pause it here. Okay, guys, I'm going to show you this CME tracker real quick. I probably should have done this at the beginning. But if you see, here's that double CME. Um, you can see Earth's orbit. This is a, a top-down view of our solar system. Here's Earth's orbit. Now you'll see when it reaches that our orbit line, if you look up here on the top at the, at the time stamp, you see right around the 20th is when it crosses our path. Okay. Now, this right here is a side view. We can look at that. Um, but this right here really shows it pretty good. This over here is the Earth's orbit around the sun that's been stretched out into a straight line. So it kind of gives us a really clear view of, you know, where you see the little distortions. That is that CME. You can see how it kind of, you know, crosses our path like that. And if we zoom in right here, you can see how we take a glancing blow from it. Watch. Right there. Okay. And if we go over here and zoomed in on this, we get to see that that uh, like greenish color, Clippus. See that? Right there. And if we look at the side view, same thing. Boom. See that? Right there. That was that CME. So... You can see how when it goes on out the back, it actually, you can see a little bit more intensity. Um, we see that sometimes. It spreads out like buckshot, guys. So, you know, it's just the nature of what it does. But I want to re refresh your memory on that so you guys knew what I was talking about, about that double CME. Okay, guys, I got you over to geoelectric model. Um, what this is showing you guys, it's showing you the effects of basically solar wind or a CME, its effects and the chances of the intensity of the effects on our electrical grid or artificial electricity is what they call it. Um, it like transformers, wires, all that stuff, right? Obviously, artificial means not natural, that kind of a thing. Um, so this is what this, this shows us. Now, it's a good, it's a newer tool. It's only been there for about a year. Um, typically what you see is that darker blue. Okay. You see that darker blue right in about, you know, right there. Usually the whole continent looks like that. Um, we'll see a little flashes of this lighter color every once in a while. But when we get these events, like we're seeing right now, um, this right here is what we're going to see. We're going to see oranges, um, really deep color oranges, even close to red. Now something with this tool, we can't see archived information. All right, so if we don't see it when it happens on this tool, we don't get to see it at all. So that's why I check this one pretty frequently for that reason. If I had a good enough computer and was whatever with that, I would um, just put it on like a, a reoccurring cycle and just record everything if I had big enough memory and just re erase it every day when it, you know, if I didn't see anything because it really wouldn't matter after that. 
but it would eat up so much memory and it would cause my computer to run all the time. So I, I, I decided not to do that, but it, I think Scott might do some of that, but I'm not sure. Um, but what we're going to see guys, I'm just going to play this and obviously you're going to see that, uh, most definitely is, uh, active. You're going to see orange and it's going to spread out and you get, you've seen those little lines, deeper oranges. Um, yeah, so that's at the height of that geomagnetic storm. I was able to uh, capture this for that reason. Um, so that does give us a good idea that, you know, this is how it's actually affecting our electrical grid. We could have, if it was much worse or lasted longer, um, there might have been even some, like, internet uh, outages or slowdown of the net in these areas. Um, GPS stuff may have been affected a little bit, I guess. Um, I hate that stupid thing. Sorry. Um, yeah, I don't even use that program anymore. <laughs> uh, I switched over to Phoenix Recorder. But anyway, um, there you go. So, I think it's pretty crazy. But that's what we would expect to see. Okay, guys, little update here on the Schumann. Um, obviously, this event has slowed down. Um, it's kind of ticked down to, you know... A manageable signature i guess it did last almost exactly two days which is very strange okay that and the first part of it actually was like a mirror image of the second part pretty close to it i showed you guys that in the previous video I drew you know drew a line and showing you guys what i was seeing um but what i want to say here guys is i i will be putting out like another video and i'm going to what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a playlist you know i'm going to start uh, telling people what you know, physically and mentally the effects of this, okay? Um, it may just be one or two videos just giving a basic explanation and then leave you guys to it to go research it for yourself. Um, but I do want, I don't want to have to keep repeating myself because I think it takes time away from people that watch here all the time. Um, but, you know, I do always want to touch on the basics for the newer viewers and I kind of feel an obligation to do so. Um, the goal of my channel since the beginning has to be able to give you guys the the knowledge to go look at the tools for yourself. Because that's something I struggled with when I first came into this, uh, you know, come to doing any of this, any of this research. Um, I didn't know how to get to anywhere. And it was really frustrating sometimes. So I do like to show you guys how to go there, get there. So if you guys ever have any questions on how to navigate to get to these things, let me know. But I'm... Um, my, my goal is to actually put like a playlist together and show you guys how to get to those tools. And, you know, at some level, like when we're talking about this, give you a basic understanding of why we even go look at it. So when we're talking about the Schumann, that's a whole wide range of things that this thing can do. Um, this thing is so important. Everything's frequency, guys. It's very powerful. It just really is. It's powerful stuff. Now, what I want to say today about this is yes, that spike's very, very impressive, but look here, okay? We're seeing a consistent uptick in the increase of frequency. Now, I know there's a lot of theories on why that's happening. Um, you go back and look six months ago, you're not going to see that sticking around right there. You're going to see, what you're going to see is you're going to see some spikes and stuff too because it did start upticking about a year, year and a half ago, but 7.83 is our normal. All right, about right in that area, hertz. So in about increments of four, I'm starting to see more consistently uh, seeing these uh, frequencies at that level of hertz staying for a significant amount of time. In other words, it's raising, it's staying there, and we're starting to see it more often. It's not going away. That's what I'm trying to say. So it's almost like we're raising our frequency some, and it's staying, it's staying more constant. Um, and it's very evident with what we're seeing here. So whatever your guys' belief is on that, um, I'll leave it to you to do what you do there. Um, but I just want you guys to understand the observation. And that's what this is. So research it for yourself. There's no better way to learn, guys. Research Dr. Reif. Research human resonance. Research frequency. Um, that will get you a whole lot of places that you guys can go look and learn. So um, that's what I would say about this. Okay, guys, um, I just want to show you this real quick. Now, this particular screenshot was from earlier today. Um, what you're seeing, you're seeing a bunch of pressure, okay? 
And I, I was going to show it to you earlier and I forgot. So the sun's over here. Well, it's actually, you know, kind of here. In other words, it's reverse of the one I usually show you. It's moving from left to right. Now, the ones currently, oops, let me uh, get back to that. Where are we at? Right there. Okay. So right now, if you look at, if you were to go look at the, um, this model, the whole earth would be surrounded in red. This little blue area there what isn't even there right now. Okay. So what I'm saying is that that's increased pressure around our planet. Now we, I don't know if it's actually far enough into our atmosphere to really like really, really push on us. Um, but it looks like it's, it's giving us a pretty good shot of it. All right. Now, why is that important? Well, I'm going to give you this example. Take a firecracker, light it in your hand. Don't do that, by the way. <laughs> if I should have said, I guess. If you take a firecracker and you light it and let it go off in your hand with your hand wide open, it's going to be loud and it's going to burn a little bit and might hurt just a touch. But you're going to keep your fingers and your hand, right? Well, you take that same little firecracker, make a fist around it, and you walk around there not being able to play the piano ever again, okay? Um, so that's what I'm trying to say. It's very similar to the, the uncle analogy I used when we're talking about compression and rapid expansion. You know, when we're getting pressed upon, if I'm standing here and somebody starts pushing me, I have to exert the exact same amount of pressure that they're pushing on me if I want to stay in the same spot. Now, what happens when they quit pushing on me? I lunge forward, right? Well, that's kind of what happens with our planet. This is very basic level stuff, guys. I'm not talking, I'm not going to go into a huge subject about this, but when we get compressed like that, especially all around our planet, not just in one spot, back, front, side, whatever, the whole thing right now is surrounding us. So when that pressure starts to release, if it releases really, really fast, well, first off, the pressure itself can increase earthquakes. Okay? It's just the nature of it, right? But on the other end of that, the release of that pressure can cause earthquakes also for the very reason I just said. Because once that pressure, if it releases too fast, we push out. Okay, so, you know, we're not ever going to, like, fill this here on the planet or anything, but it's at a level that it could actually start, it could make things slip. So it could actually cause earthquakes. Um, you know, I've seen it happen a few times. Now, you know, are there going to be huge ones? There's no way for us to tell that, okay? All I can say is when we see this pressure, don't think that just because we're getting pushed on, that's the only only issue we have. The other issue is, the speed that this stuff releases because if it does it slow most likely nothing's going to happen but if we get some high solar wind like when we're like this right now and it flushes those uh, high dense particles out of here and we go back to our normal you know ambient condition really really fast it could trigger some stuff guys that's all i'm saying doesn't do it every time it's just something I wanted to point out because it most certainly is part of the conversation. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end it there. Um, but, yeah, a lot of stuff going on in the world, guys. Just, just keep your head on a swivel. Um, a lot of people might not know this yet, but um, Mr. Uh, Kimmy over there, you know, on uh, NK North <laughs> that likes to, you know, fire off some rockets with some firecrackers on it. Um, he's actually... Uh, we're hearing that he's brain dead, guys. He had surgery, like some sort of cardiovascular surgery. And it didn't go well. And that's why he hasn't been around. Um, you know, you had not heard much about it. Some people have been talking about it a little bit. But there's word now that he's actually, you know, brain dead. So they may be pulling the plug on this. I don't know. If that happens, please stay aware. All the other stuff going on around the world right now, I'm not even going to go into all that. But just that one fact right there is enough to destabilize that whole area. Um, so we don't want to go there with that, but, you know, I just want you guys to be aware of all that stuff. I don't usually talk about stuff like that, and I'm not going to go any deeper on that. But, um, yeah, guys, just pay attention. Um, yeah, so I, I think I am going to leave it there. God bless.
Yeshua saves, and uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.